would have to bring up. 79E, does everybody know what that is? That is the selectmen are deciding to eliminate that. Uh, I don't understand why they eliminate that. Um, mm -hmm. 79E is a, a, a tax uh, incentive to a developer to come in and, 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 and to develop some property, whether it be someone coming in and building a fifty million dollar project in a couple blocks or something like that. It gives the selectmen a, a, a tool to make a deal. To say, all right, we'll keep your taxes the same what they are now for maybe five years or three years or one year. So it's up to the selectmen to decide. That was for it's from revitalizing collapsing. Yes. Well, not just from the fire or from no, the fire. Fire. But, but it, so I think it's a mistake to take it away. I don't think it should be used for every property. I think it should be used at the selecting discussion of something that could help the town, not just the beach, the town. Uh, by increasing property values, it's going to eventually lower all our taxes. So if someone wants to put a $50 million project down in downtown Hampton, and they think it's a great idea, but the only way they'll do it is if they get a tax rebate, a tax um, abatement type of thing for three years. If, if, if that's available to fluff them, they can do it. They, if this is thrown away, sorry, this is the tax rate. You know, and I think it's a mistake to, to take a tool away from the selectmen and help develop. There's people that say, well, those developers are making a lot of money. Why should they get anything? And you know what? A developer comes in and takes a chance that he's going to make money. And, and we've all seen through the 80s, parts of the 90s, the, the, the people have come in and have lost everything. So it's not always a guarantee that if you build a six-story building somewhere, you're going to make money. It's not there. So this is a tool that the selectmen have to help give an incentive to develop. So I, I, I honestly think if you have issues for or against, you should bring this up to the selectmen. Obviously, from my tone, I'm for seven to nine mean, but there are some people that are against me. <laughs> if I may, I think, Mr. Chairman, we say the selection, you make sure you carefully phrase some of the selection. Okay, some of the selection. Well, it was well, a three-two three article out for the voters to decide. <coughs> well, the voters decided to put it in. Well, now they're giving an opportunity to decide to review it. I don't make another request. Can I get a pizza or something? <laughs> <laughs> See, the reason you come in late <laughs> is so you can choose where to see. <laughs> See? And then you wouldn't expect to see happening. I pay taxes for the chair. It is on Monday at 7 o'clock. Uh, 16? Monday at 16? Monday at 16? Okay. Basically, 79E still is totally within the control of the selectmen to use it or not use it, to vote, to rescind its authorization to be used. What they are effectively saying is we don't want to make any decisions. Take it off the table, and we don't have to make a decision. A parallel to this was when everybody thought mandatory sentencing in the criminal justice system was the answer. The simple answers usually are not good answers. You've got to live, leave a little discretion with the governing boy, the judge in the case of the criminal sentencing, or the selectman in the case of the panel. Otherwise, you do lose a tool, and it's not a tool you have to use, but if you take it away, you can't use it. Should you want left to use it? So hopefully we'll see people on uh, Monday. Mm -hmm. uh, but I must say that some interesting topics came up which inspired me to make further comments, if I may. Thank you. <coughs> First of all, the, the, uh, I want to congratulate Commissioner Ladd for bringing up the concept of unintended consequences. I think uh, people in, engaged in public policy uh, really need to be much more conscious, as he was suggesting, 
They're always take into consideration unintended consequences because often we intend really good things uh, without thinking about the negative aspects that might that might arise from that. 79E is an example. And I'll tell you why that is. Because if you look at the, the history, the legislative history of 79E, that was actually inspired by Hampton. Hampton inspired the state legislature to do 79E. And it did that because we had fires at the beach and we wanted to stimulate uh, the, the redevelopment of those properties that, that burned down, essentially. And I believe it was Nancy Stiles that brought it up to the state legislature. They went through their sausage-making factory up there. And, and what happened was there was Senator a... Stiles. Well, Senator Stiles. I, did, I thought I said that. Um, there was a upcountry town, I can't remember the name of it, that liked the idea, but they wanted to expand it because Senator Stiles proposed that for properties that you know, had burned down in a finite period of time, or basically narrowing it down to our particular need, that we would allow a certain, uh, we would allow selectmen to to uh, give them tax abatements for, as, as a means of stimulating <coughs> the development. But up country said, well, well, no, let's expand it to something much, much more than that. And so the idea of properties that were burnt down, that got thrown out, was just like any property that the board of selectmen essentially wishes to have developed. So it became very much more expansive than what we originally intended here in Hampton. And the legislation, among other things, it's fairly lengthy in, in terms of its wording. I read it only once, and I thought I was surprised at how long it was. Uh, but I noticed that basically uh, it required uh, that the legislative body in, the, in a municipality, in, in our case it would be the town meeting of Hamptons, would uh, authorize the governing body, the Board of Selectmen, to set standards by which they could grant these tax abatements for the purposes of stimulating economic activity. Of course, the assumption is that <coughs> the governing body, namely the Board of Selectmen, are you know, sufficiently schooled in economics to make such a decision as to what stimulates an economy or not. You know, we've got our Alan Greenspan on there and so forth, right? But uh, even beyond that, it did call for the creation of standards. Those standards have been set by the Board of Selectmen. And I believe that that is the central contention by Selectmen being, is that we're doing it property by property uh, without having first established an objective standard. And I believe that that's what stimulated this motion of repealing it. Personally, myself, I would prefer that the Warren article read something like, uh, we suspend doing it until we have standards established. But that's not what, uh, what took place. So now that's why it's out there. It's back to the voters to make a decision. I think the properties that we were originally intending, uh, uh, what's the name of that place? So used, where the old salt used to be? Seaspray. Um, Seaspray, yeah. That's been developed, so the the original reason why we created 79E has been met on that property, and the property on A the A block H property, yeah. that that's that's in process now. No, no. Hmm. So one can argue that the reason that Hampton wanted 79E to begin with has already been satisfied, and we don't need it anymore. So you could look at it from that way we don't as have well. To use it. That's what I said from the beginning. Right, so if we're not going to use it, then you know laws that aren't going to be used should be repealed and brought back to life when they're needed again. That's another argument. That that's your well, that's another argument <laughs> that could be made. I'm not expressing my opinion. Okay. I'm just trying to give more uh, what else more of an accurate characterization than was otherwise given. 